This is video two of the EDR Pilot tutorials. In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of uh, measurement and verification. I won't be going to detail on the spreadsheets because uh, how to fill those in is covered in videos three and four. This video will be in five main parts. So I'll start with a bit of uh, information on what you need before you actually uh, start on filling in your documents. I'll move on to timing so you know when you'll need to do things by. I'll then go on to the steps involved in submitting an MMV plan, summary of what you need to provide, uh, and finish on some common errors and top tips and where you can find a bit more information. So just a bit of background to MNV or measurement and verification. So your measurement and verification documents set out actually what is in your uh, project uh, and you actually use them to calculate your total expected savings and obviously indicate how you will measure and verify your savings. The payments uh, in the pilot are based on the peak kilowatt savings that your project delivers as evidenced by your measurement and verification documents. So you can't participate or get paid without them. So they're an indispensable part of the process. Uh, the important thing to note is it can take uh, a bit of time to collate and fill in the relevant uh, documents, you know, up to seven working days uh, potentially. So it's really important you don't leave it too late to collate the information and start filling in uh, the documents. In terms of the measurement and verification approaches in the pilot, there's, a, there's only two options. So either the deemed approach or metered approach. So the deemed approach, uh, if you have a project which includes one of the seven technologies included in that approach, you can use uh, a spreadsheet and put the details of your existing replacement equipment and it will automatically calculate the savings for you. Um, if, you're, if you have a project that doesn't include technologies uh, on those on this, one of the seven technologies that you can use that approach, uh, or if you just wish to, you can use a metered approach and there's three different versions, but there's more uh, on those in videos uh, three and four respectively. In terms of the information you need to hand to actually fill in your documents, there's three things uh, you need. So the first is that you'll need uh, the details of your existing replacement equipment in your project. So that includes uh, the type and the model of your existing replacement equipment, uh, the kilowatt values of your existing replacement equipment, the location and quantity being installed and replaced. You'll also need uh, to know the time of use of your equipment over the winter peak period. So the winter peak period being November to February weekdays, 4 to 8 p.m. So you'll need to provide the typical operating hours of the equipment that you will include in your project to calculate the peak savings, the winter peak savings. And finally, you'll also need evidence to support the kilowatt values of the replacement equipment in your project. So it's only the replacement equipment you don't need to worry about evidencing your existing equipment. And what that means in practice is that you'll need to provide a uh, technical specification uh, in most cases or potentially a supply quote to substantiate the kilowatt values of each replacement equipment type in your project so if you're installing a project with say 20 pumps of two different types you'd need to provide technical specifications for the two different pump types this slide just gives a bit of a sense of the key time uh, timing and milestones that you need to be aware of so first thing is the pilot itself launched on 16th of june the deadline for submitting an application is the 15th of October. Um, before that deadline, though, you'll see there's a registration deadline here of the 3rd September. So you need to register before you submit an application and you need to make sure you do so by the 3rd September. Otherwise, you won't then be able to put in uh, an application. So do make sure you register by that, uh, that deadline, 3rd September, uh, if you want to participate or are interested in, in participating. 17th September, this is a voluntary deadline, so if you want to submit your uh, application documents uh, for some feedback, you can do by 17th September. We'll take a look and give you uh, feedback on your uh, documents and application. Once you've submitted your application, we will then take a look at it and let you know if you've been allowed to uh, bid into the uh, auction taking place on the 21st of January. If you're then successful in that auction, you would sign your participant by the 11th of March. And if you've got a project that involves a metered approach and you've not already provided baseline data, you need to provide it by the 30th of March of your delivery year. Uh, and here at the 30th of June, uh, if you are looking to make any uh, significant changes to your projects so the sites or technologies including your project, or you've chosen uh, at application stage to leave some of your project unspecified, you need to, at this 30th June deadline, to uh, let us know either what changes you're making or what the unspecified parts of your project are. You'll then get on with uh, installing your project and you'll need to provide installation and operational verification uh, evidence by 30th September. Your project then will be installed uh, ready in time to deliver savings over the winter peak 2016-17. 
and then you need to provide a winter capacity savings report which is effectively a report of the savings achieved over the winter peak period and then finally there's a final savings report uh, in early December. Now you'll notice there's also a series of blue deadlines here so uh, in the pilot you can actually uh, elect to go for two year ahead delivery in which case all the deadlines that I've talked about are on the baseline and winter capacity savings report etc are all just bumped uh, ahead a year and you would deliver savings over the 2017-18 uh, period so you, you can choose for your project would you deliver either year or two year ahead delivery. There's five steps overall to submitting uh, your MMV plan. So the first is to choose your MMV approach. As I say, it's deemed or metered and a relatively straightforward process to decide which you need to use. You then fill in your spreadsheets, uh, including details of your equipment and time of use to calculate your peak kilowatt savings. You then uh, collect your supporting evidence. As I say, that's a technical specification or supplier quote for each replacement equipment type included in your plan. And you do need to make sure that these technical specifications match the information provided in your plan. So if your uh, technical specification for your pump says 8 kilowatts, your plan should also say 8 kilowatts. You then calculate your expected savings and put in the total in your summary sheet, which is explained in one of the later videos. And you then review and upload uh, your documents and you uh, can do that on the EDR portal. In terms of what you have to provide, so uh, first document here is the MMV summary sheet. This is just a document, very simple, straightforward. You just provide the totals of your deemed savings approach here, your expected savings and deems parts of your project, uh, the meter parts of your project, and then it calculates the total uh, savings of your project. If you elect to choose some of your, uh, leave some of your project uh, unspecified at application stage, you can also include that and a total expected savings value will be calculated. So you do this uh, document actually at the end. If you're doing a deemed approach, you would uh, complete and attach your deemed uh, MMV spreadsheet or, or more than one, uh, if you have more than one, and you would uh, sum the total to put into your deemed uh, total savings in your summary sheet. If you're doing a metered approach, you need to fill in uh, an MMV metered plan uh, with the details of the metered part of your project, and you'll also need to provide baseline data for each of the different MMV approaches you're using to measure and verify savings. As I mentioned, you'll need to provide technical specifications, no matter which approach you're using, uh, and that's to substantiate the kilowatt values for each replacement equipment type included in your uh, project. Uh, so that gives an overview of all the different documents. The ones you'll actually need to submit depend on which of the MMV uh, approaches you'll uh, actually be using in your project. So a few uh, top tips. Um, don't forget the technical specifications or supply quotes for each uh, replacement equipment type in your project uh, and make sure that the information in your technical specification matches your plan. Uh, make sure you upload all of the required documents. It's easy to, uh, to do, overlook some of them. So there are checklists in the videos and in the manual that you can use to make sure you've got everything. Uh, and make sure your technology is eligible. So it is uh, you know, savings that are achieved through improved efficiency and not something like on-site generation. Final uh, slide, so where you can get more information. So the key thing is to take a look at the measurement and verification manual once you, when you want to find out a bit more detail that has uh, all the information, all the different approaches and an overview of everything uh, you should need to know. There is also our website, uh, which looks like this. And if you do have any questions, you can get in touch on our uh, email address here. So you can email us at edr-project at deck gsi.gov.uk or you can call us on this number so 0300 068 8488 so I will now very quickly show you where you can download that manual so you go to our uh, EDR uh, web page here you click on supporting information and documents page scroll down to the measurement and verification manual forms and here is the measurement and verification manual and you just click on that and it downloads so that's where you actually find the MV uh, manual that concludes video two